Hey ho, hey ho! Hello kids, happy Sunday! How are you doing? I hope all of you are doing well. Are you ready for Sunday school? Oh yeah? That's awesome! Let's start our Sunday school with a word of prayer. Please repeat after me. Our Father in heaven, we give thanks for your grace and mercy. As we worship you today in Sunday school, please give us humble hearts and listening ears. We pray for the Holy Spirit to give us understanding and obedience. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. As usual, before we listen to the Bible story, let's play a game. The name of the game today is Who Am I? The rule of the game is pretty simple. You just need to guess who are the people shown in the pictures and what promises did God promise them. So you have about five seconds to guess each picture. Are you ready? Let's go. Hmm, this one is pretty easy. Who are they? You are right. They are Adam and Eve. Now, what promises did God give them? Do you remember when they ate the forbidden fruit and they were hiding in the bushes and God made a promise with them? God promised that one day someone very special would be born into their family. Do you remember how that would be? That's right, the Savior, and God really kept His promise. Now, can we all whisper, God keeps His promises? God keeps His promises. <laughs> Next, who is this person? Can you see from the picture? Because the picture gives you a clue. You're right, it's Noah. Now, who can tell me what did God promise Noah? Yes, God promised Noah that he will save Noah and his family from the flood and to never again destroy the earth with a flood. Now, let's all say it slowly. God keeps his promises. God keeps his promises very good next do you know who are the people in this family wow look at that baby so cute but the parents look quite old who could they be you're right they are abraham sarah and isaac now, what promises did God give to Abraham? Yes, that he and Sarah would have a child. And God gave them baby Isaac in their old age. Nothing is too hard for God to do. Can we say God keeps his promises melodiously? Maybe we can fit it into a song. Let me try. God keeps his promises, promises, promises. Now you try. Not bad. Next. Wow, there are so many people in this picture. Who are they? It seems that the old man in the picture is blessing his son. Can you guess? They are Jacob and Joseph. Ah, I know. 
This must be what happened after Joseph met with his father again. God had promised that his people would grow in number and become a great nation. How did God keep his promise to Jacob and his family? God used Joseph to save Jacob's family from starving to death. He brought them to Egypt so all the family could get back together again. Now, can we say very quickly, God keeps his promises. God keeps his promises. <laughs> that was fast. Well, 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 who is this boy? He seems to have just woke up from his sleep. Who could it be? Can you guys guess? He is Samuel. Do you remember God called Samuel in his sleep? Samuel listened and obeyed when God spoke to him. Samuel trusted God because he knew that God always keeps his word. Now, let's say God keeps his promises in a singing voice. Can you do it? God keeps his promises. Wow, that was quite melodious. Last one. Who is this person? He looks so wise and he is sitting on a throne. Can you guess who he is? You are right. This must be King David. King David trusts that God's promises that the Savior would be born into his family many years later. Now, let's say loudly, God keeps his promises. God keeps his promises. Well, that was fun. How many can you guess? Did you guess correctly for all of the pictures? Okay, now it's time for our Bible story. So make sure you sit down nicely and ready your ears and hearts for this Bible story. Today we are going to learn that God kept his promise of a savior. God sent his own son to be the savior. When he was born, Jesus had a manger for a bed. When Jesus grew up, he died on the cross and rose again to forgive our sins. Long, long ago, God promised one day he would send a child who would pay for Adam and Eve's sins and the sin of all God's people. God had a wonderful plan to send a Savior to take the punishment we all deserve. Abraham and Isaac looked forward to the coming of the Savior. So did Jacob and David. God had promised them that one day a Savior would arrive and they all believed that God would do as he said. Many years passed, and finally, it was the right time for God to keep his promise. Right here, in God's word, we learn that Jesus was do going to be born into the family of Abraham and David, just as God had promised. God sent an angel to a young woman named Mary, who was part of Abraham and David's family. The angel told Mary that God had chosen her to be the mother of the promised Savior. Greetings, the angel said. The Lord is with you. When Mary saw the angel and heard what he said, she was worried. What did the angel mean? Don't be afraid, Mary, Gabriel said. I have good news for you from God. You are going to give birth to a baby boy. You will name him Jesus. He will be great. He will be God's son and he will be king forever. 
And Mary said to the angel, How could this happen? By the Holy Spirit's power, you will give birth to a son. The angel explained. God would make a miracle happen so that Mary could get pregnant and give birth to God's own son. Mary thought about what the angel said. The baby who would be born to her would be named Jesus, which means the Lord saves. Jesus, the promised Savior, would come to save his people from sin. Mary believed the message Gabriel brought from God. I am God's servant, she said. Let everything happen just as you have told me. An angel also appeared to a man named Joseph in a dream. Joseph was part of David's family too. The angel said, Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Mary and Joseph believed God's promise and got ready for the birth of the baby. They traveled to the town of Bethlehem and while they were there, it was time for the baby to be born. They did not have a pl any place to stay in Bethlehem. So when the baby was born, Mary wrapped him in clothes and laid him in a manger. A manger is a box where food is placed for animals to eat. Even though Mary and Joseph didn't have a bed or cradle for the newborn, they were very glad that God had kept his promise to send the Savior. And Joseph named the baby Jesus just as God had commanded. When Jesus grew up, he went everywhere doing the work of his heavenly Father. He preached the God's word. He taught his disciples. He healed the sick. The sick. He blessed little children. And then, he did the most wonderful thing of all for God's people. Jesus died on the cross to pay for all our sins. Jesus, God's son, was willing to go to the cross to take the punishment we should have had. On the third day after his death, Jesus came back to life. He is alive now, and one day we will live with him forever. If we believe in him as our Savior and King. God loves us very much. And all along, he had a plan to save his people. He promised to send a Savior, and he kept his promise. God always keeps his promises. So, that is our Bible story today. Kids, how did God keep his promise of a Savior? He keeps his promise as a Savior by, send, by sending his son as a little baby. What name did the angel tell Joseph to give the baby? You're right. Jesus. The name Jesus meant that he would save his people from their sins. And why do we need a savior? Because we are all sinners and we should be punished for our sins. But God wanted to save us from being punished. God had a wonderful plan to save us. He sent his very own son, Jesus, to die in our place. Jesus took the punishment we deserve when he died on the cross. When we trust in Jesus to save us, 
God forgives all our sins. God is very good and loving to us. We are very thankful that he kept his word to send Jesus to save us from sins. Let us close our eyes and pray. Dear Father, thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to be the promised Savior. Thank you that he died for my sins. Help me to keep learning to trust and obey you. Help me to keep learning what you say to me in the Bible. Thank you for keeping all your promises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now it's time for our memory first. Children, can you repeat after me? Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Luke chapter 2, verse 11. Can we say it together one more time? Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Luke chapter 2, verse 11. Now, children, do you still remember our shorter catechism? This week, we will go through catechism question 21 to 25. Can you repeat after me? Question 21. In what condition did God make Adam and Eve? He made them holy and happy. In what condition did God make Adam and Eve? He made them holy and happy. Question 22. What is a covenant? An agreement between two or more persons. What is a covenant? An agreement between two or more persons. Question 23. What covenant did God make with Adam? The covenant of work. What covenant did God make with Adam? The covenant of work. Question 24. What was Adam bound to do by the covenant of works? To obey God perfectly. What was Adam bound to do by the covenant of works? To obey God perfectly. Question 25. What did God promise in the covenant of works? To reward Adam with life if he obeyed him. What did God promise in the covenant of works? To reward Adam with life if he obeyed him. Very well, children. So now it's time for activities. Over here, we have two uh, pictures which you can ask your mommy and daddy to help you print. And as you can see, within these pictures, there are some missing lines, but instead they are replaced by numbers. Can you connect the dots? from one number to the other so that it becomes a full picture. You can do it for both pictures and after that you can color these pictures. Okay, And once you color this, maybe you can ask mommy and daddy to take a picture and send it to 
the Sunday school teachers so we can see how beautiful your activities is. Okay, let's sing the doxology to bring all glory back to God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. So, this is the end of our Sunday school today. See you next week, and God bless you.